Right, while there's a storm raging outside. You hear that? Extremely high winds and rain, and the boat's rocking all over the place. So I'm going to give it a service. I brought. Oh, look, I've got loads of oil filters. And I don't know what they are, look, but they're a, they're a reconstruction of the beta filters. I bought four of them. I wanted to, I wanted to buy two, but I ended up ordering four because I thought I was ordering two fuel filters and two oil filters, but I ended up ordering four oil filters. What a. Oh. I am my own worst enemy. I'm terrible when it comes to looking at stuff and, and analysing things, you know. I'm really bad at that. Oh my god, it's full of water. What is. Wow, it's full of water back there. Why isn't my thingy working? Right, today I'm going to waffling. I've changed the coolant, I've serviced the batteries, I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to change the gearbox oil. I'm going to change and clean the fuel filter. Oh no, I can't because I haven't got a fuel filter yet. The new one. I could clean the wasp filter. I'll sell oil and gearbox oil today. Anyway, I'm going to check checking those as usual, you know. And this seems to have lasted really well. This bracket I've built. Sorry about the light. This bracket seems to be holding this real solid. So all the weight is on these and the front bracket right under there so all this is all hanging on those you know that's why it's so weak so that that steadying bracket there has done me wonders filthy thumbs up for that man look how clean my thumbs are a lot oh, apart from that bit oh, let's get them dirty i bought this um i bought this new oil drain because it's smaller the other one's a big round thing, the other one that's under there, which I'm going to sell with all my tools. I've got loads of tools to sell. So it takes about five and a half, so this should be perfect for storage and for just filling that up right to the top, you know, without spilling it everywhere. So, um, yeah, that was only fiver, something like that. No, it's ten actually, lying. So hopefully that should work. Fingers crossed. Let's pump it out. Firstly, I can get a light on there. Firstly, I've got to turn this valve to allow me. The engine is is still hot from cruising. Left it about an hour. It's still hot though. Turn that valve on, and I can start pumping then. So let's. I think this should fit under there. Hopefully, give me a minute. Pumping now. That can I can drain that, and that'll just drain into there and that should fill up to the top and I can just seal it and then pull it out without spilling it everywhere you know like the other nice and gentle oh I put my dipstick out I was creating a vacuum just lift that out a bit otherwise that's it Very careful I don't spill this. Just let me sort this out a minute. There we go. I've got it levelled up now so I can just let that drain into there. I'm nearly, I'm nearly full up now. And that lovely sound of Sump being empty. Oh, it's splatting everywhere. Gently. Oh! Bloody hell. Strangely enough, it doesn't all drain into. So I'm just going to wipe everything off. The whole reason of me buying this is so I can lift it out without spilling the oil everywhere, like so. Ah, oh, worked a treat. All we've got to do now is wipe all of that down and um, take the oil filter off. I've wiped it down as much as I can. Um, 
now it's time for the oil filter which is under here now I've um, got to get this filter off here I've already got loosened it oh there we are I put that tub down there look to catch the oil just going to drain this off yeah. not much oil there let that drain okay I've just marked it with it's 5th of the 10th 22 today and 964 hours and 14 hours over the service but hey whatever in it hey whatever I've got the recommended oil 1540 takes about five and a half liters this engine okay Liters. Just below that mark, below that mark, you can see that line. Right, um, obviously, it's going to fill the oil filter up and then use a bit, so I'm going to fire it up and then let it run and it settle and then check it again. settle a minute I'm just going to check give it a wipe and then check it oh come on it's hard to see through a camera right as you can see look it's about halfway up so I'm going to put another half a litre in and then that's how we go from there Okie dokie, and I've got a spare, I've got some spare oil, so I've got two, I bought two five litres, and every time I buy a five litre I need another half a litre of the other one, so the other one lasts, you know, five, ten services. Let's put another squirty squirty in, probably half a litre there, look, bit by bit, and then let that drain and keep checking it. That I reckon that might be enough. And I'll check it in a day or two. I'm giving it a minute to drain. We're almost. Oh, 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 oh. Let's try that. Get that again. We're there, look. See that? So a little bit off, full, um. I'm going to leave it at that for a couple of days and I'm going to check it again because it goes up slightly. Uh, I don't know why, it's just, it just seems I keep filling up to the to the proper mark and then I, it goes over in a few days later. So this time I'm not going to keep making the same mistake over and over again. Lovely. Next thing to do is uh, run it. I'm going to check the oil filter for any leaks. And, and I've said it before in my other vlogs that sometimes sometimes these come off and stay on the engine so you have to make sure that these o-rings come off and um, they're still in their oil filter when you take them off otherwise if you've got two o-rings on there you'll have a leak top tip of the day i'm just checking the belt um see if the belt uh, tension is tight i'll check that earth straps tight down there I'm just going to check all the bolts that I can about don't not checking these though because they're I've put some Loctite on those if I, if I tighten it I'll crack I'll crack the thread and it might shake itself loose so they'll just put let's check those with my finger to make sure they're not coming out and the same way same with the front of this but this seems to work let's check that yeah that seems to work wonders um, okay right on to the gearbox oil next this is a PRM 120 gearbox and this is not is an 18 
strangely enough. Hmm. Yeah, it's an 18 lot. <clears throat> there we are. I'll put that oil into a jug and inspect it. And then just put back in what I take out. So it's usually about 500 millilitres, half a litre. Oh, it's pretty clean still, but I'm going to syringe it out. There is a sump nut, because I can't get to my sump. I can't get to my sump nut that easily, so I'll just put a bit of, a bit of pipe in. And suck it out with a suck it out with a syringe and pull that into a just pull that into a jug like that. It's just so much easier and quicker. And uh, these these jugs are in any kitchen cupboard. Don't tell my missus. Make sure you wash it before you put it back. Get to all the juice at the bottom. And that's it. Wiggle it around a bit. I better move that in case I drop it. Make sure I'm at the bottom there. Wiggle it around. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Right, so look at that oil. How much we've taken out. And it's usually, it's one pint or half a litre or 500 ml. How many millilitres there? Just over. I'll put that back in. Also, you, have to, you get scratches. That's part and parcel of uh, fixing stuff. Always got to scratch yourself. Otherwise, you're not a proper mechanic. No, oh, you ain't gloves and all that dirty oil. I've been mechanicing for years, right? I've not worn. Look how smooth and beautiful my hands are. Beautiful. Look at that. Filthy thumbs. I know you can never have long nails either doing mechanics. You just keep catching. They're catching everything, you know. When you're taking things out, they break them. So, uh, right. Oil in. This is the oil that I've always used at Dexron 2. I think these gearboxes are very sensitive to overfilling. If you overfill it, uh, it causes all kinds of problems. Uh, pressure build up and uh, blow out the uh, vents. It can also blow your seals out as well. So you've got to be very careful with the levels. So I've just taken out. I'm putting back what I've taken out. I replaced this air filter on the 3rd of the 6th of June. Uh, it's now October, so it should be it should be super duper. I'll just turn these and every third service I'll change them. Let's have a little look. Oh look. I've turned it there, look. I've turned it there. <laughs> oh dear. Well there's clean lot, so you can see wire to and it can't you? you can see it's and it gets blocked up in that in that uh a bottleneck part so yeah right back in all i'm checking is to make sure these wait a minute that one to make sure these are tight Yeah, lovely. Let's just get that around here. Yeah, so that this spanner here is resting on that bit of metal there. Look, I'm just checking to see. Make sure I've got the rotation right. Yeah, see if that's, that's tight. And I'll 
go around and do all these these ones and then I'll do the other ones the other way you know it's different thread different uh, oh that's tight yet yeah. also I check these ones as well I turn that and it's very very loose and easy to turn so I just this slightly just a 17 Turn and that one. Half a turn, then I feel it again, and that is a slight resistance. So, what I like to do next is I like to always put a slather of slithering of grease on these. Can you see that? I'm not sure. Some grease on the cables, you know. the throttle this is the gear cable and the throttle cable is down here I'm just gonna put a uh, just there along put a slithering of grease on it I'm not just curious to see what this is like inside I'm just gonna try and I've cut it open after a right load of faff and mess it looks pretty, it looks like a, just a standard, pretty full of crap isn't it? That could be from me sawing it though down there. So I'll check the, see how many fins there are on this one look. That's pretty brittle that is, wow look at that. brittle and shows you doesn't it that's why I've been cutting it there very very papery and nothing to it anyway it's, look how black it is it's full of yeah it's full of crap in it so that's that one I'm going to check the other one to see how many how dense the fins are when I've next service it quality ones have a lot of these fins you see and other ones cheaper ones don't so we'll check that alrighty can I reach that hmm. oh, that's my fuel turned off
service. I'm just checking the condition of the battery levels. say there's water in there I mean as you can see there look there's, there's plenty in there it's over the that's the general one of that one I'll do them all the same when I top them up look at that one I'm gonna top them all up yeah because it's just just above the plates if I leave it any longer, it's going to go below the plates. It's like that back one. I don't like doing that. I'll have to just forget that before I forgot and I nearly bore dry these batteries, so I'm paranoid about that. I mean, they're all just one more over here. And they're all generally. Um, above the plate, so it's fine, but it's a little bit of fluffing on that one, not and the rest of them. Uh, are very, very good. I'll just wipe that off. I think it's where the gases, the gas of the batteries, meet the uh, positive ions in the air, is it? Creates a crystallization of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. But I need to put more Vaseline on that one. So I put Vaseline on all these, look, which has protected them. This used to this one this one used to get really bad, but now it's stopped. Um I'm not 100 percent sure how it's formed, but that's my theory on it. The gases react with the positive ions in the air, creating this acidic type. Uh, Calcify calcification. Sounds posh word, isn't it? Right, let's top them up. That's freezes. I'll top that one up there. I like to do it just above that on that lip there. A bit more than that one. What this batch is about nearly four years and I've always kept them I've always kept them just at that lip there look see that well I'm happy at those levels there look that one there and that one there just on that lip I'll do I'll do always the same a little bit of uh, a little bit of acid on there look so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clean that off This rag's gonna to have to go in the bin afterwards because it just it just melt this rag, this is acid off this. I'm just gonna clean that. Get out a bit of a sand as well. Just a bit more sand in. batteries up a lot of some of the connections weren't tight even though I've tightened them up how do, they, how do they come loose I mean how's it possible that's its expansion and contraction I didn't do it tight enough that's it I'm just gonna lather that now in a bit of the old how's your father Vaselina where is it The thing we found with Vaseline is it's not, it's not a conductive 
uh, substance, so it doesn't conduct electricity. That's why we used a lot of this Vaseline in uh, electrical connectors. That's what we found anyway, you do not want to use copper, copper grease or anything like that, that's some people did. I put copper grease on my electrical joints, No. So I'll slap some of that on there. Look, I'm not an expert, electrical expert, right? Don't, uh, this is not a how-to, this is just how I do it, you know? I'm just going to go around and just lather these, uh, these electrical, just over the winter. Hey, lots of Vaseline's is. Just to protect that. Put the same over there, look. It's done it. It's done it. It's actually done really well because last time this was, these terminals were covered in um, that crystallisation. It's not happened now, so this vaseline's obviously doing its job. You know. That's it. I've got this tester. That's, that's a drop tester, and um, I'm testing this whole bank here and each one of these batteries is 235 amp hours I'm just testing this whole block which I've connected up in series oh, is it parallel? I can't remember now series oh, let's give that a test so it says read operating instructions hold load on for 10 seconds now you're wanting that needle to go into the week but it's not so that battery bank it's absolutely perfect see again not lot bingo let's disconnect that Ooh, there we are and that one so that tester has stayed in the green um 12.6 volts is still okay then wow that's hot so i've topped them up I've tightened them all up. Um, I'm chuffed with those after three, nearly four years. I bought them second hand and they're still going strong. This is my other bank of batteries I've got over here. Um, these are AGM 12 volts. That's a fuse from the solar. Um, I was going to check these connectors. Checking these. Oh, where's that one gone? Just checking these. Connectors are tight. That was a bit loose, wasn't it? That old connectors. This old connection's loose. See that? That's why you check them. Okay, let me tighten that up. Vaseline and all that, just retightened all the straps. All the connectors are all loose or loose ish, so I've just tightened a couple of turns on each one, hoofed them off. So that's my battery service done. I'm just um, draining my cooling tank and um, putting some fresh, just topping it up, putting some fresh in there. I've already got two litres out. Hopefully I'll get three or four litres, which will refresh the whole system, you know. Um, so I'm not flushing it. I'm just replacing this, this tank full. So I'll keep doing that. And in the end, you're going to get a fresh system, aren't you, eventually. But it's going to be ethanol glycol content. It's still pretty high in this. I mean, this is three years old. And I recommend three years for these. Um these systems these these fluids oh, it's nearly there's full. a chart here telling you uh, what the mixed ratio is for you each country's we're, we're minus 18 in this country we don't think we go below that so 33 percent i've taken out three and a quarter liter so i reckon one liter and two liters of two and a bit liters of water should cover that and that'll refresh the whole system so i'm i'm, I'm just getting it ready for winter you know winterizing it this is 
antifreeze and coolant at the same time. So it's concentrate. This is blue antifreeze. Um, the old is blue. I can't see that on camera, but so I'm replacing the blue. You've got blue, green, pink. So don't mix them. I think they've got different uh, ethanol, glycol um, contents in them, you know. So yeah, there we are. A litre of um, concentrate in. I'm just going to put two and a bit litres of water. And this is this is filtered water from my filter tap. Just in case there's that lime scale, you know. So that's that. Another litre of that, and I'll just check it and top it up accordingly. You can see this. I've had to shut the thing in because it's raining. I top it up to my finger. Just that crease there is, and that's always done me, you know. It's not that level. I don't care. That's what I do. Uh, plenty in there put three litres back in so that's the whole system I've got there's my there's my uh, swim tank you know that cools the engine down it will refresh the whole system so yeah I'm happy with that I, put, I did put fresh cooling tin um, three years ago and it's I think it's a five year lifespan so I'm just redoing it now this coolant to put in now is only three years so uh, you liked this vlog please sub like and subscribed is that it where's the off button i can see it